not looking mm. much better for Manchester United oh. right now as well, especially oh. with another oh. loss for them <laughs> yesterday. I, I see we're, we're focusing on the positive, Brighton. I see. Six points from their first five <laughs> games, just the two wins, three losses in that time as well. And no biggie, but next up for them is Bayern Munich at uh -oh. the Allianz Arena in the Champions League 2. A look at the papers with the res uh, response to that loss for them. What a shambles, bad to us, crisis. What crisis, United falling apart. Ten Hag saying it's small margins. Wow, well, guys, uh, what have you made of it all, Frank LeBoff? Because it just seems to continue to get worse for Manchester United at the moment. Yeah, but we all know that. We made a statement already last week, the week before. We know what we can expect, or especially cannot expect from uh, from Manchester United. Right now, they can't give a can't give a, a result because they don't have a defense. So defensively, it's it's hard. Um, it's a big shamble at front. Also, they don't really know how to play in the dressing room. It's a problem. You have a central problem. Then you have the Anthony problem. And the thing is, I'm, you know, on the contrary of Chelsea. Um, I think we should talk about Brighton. Stop talking about Chelsea. Stop talking about Manchester United. We are, as Shaka said, mid-table team. Yeah, we all know that's big historical teams. But why don't we talk about Brighton? I saw a great team. I saw players who have a commitment, who have an involvement, who, are, uh, who listen to their coach, who, are, who know exactly what to do. They're physically, tactically, technically very good. So why do, except, except their shirt that I don't like, I love everything about Brighton. And I, I'm, when I see the media and the, the, the newspaper, what you put on the newspapers, they all talk about the Chamber of United. We don't care. We won't talk about the brightness of Brighton. Can we talk about that? Because Brighton is more, is I think, right now, the, maybe the second or the third best team in the Premier League. And it's not by, uh, or it's not randomly. It's because they have an idea of what to do. And the players, they know how to, to, uh, to put themselves into the game. Manchester United, they have the talent. But right now, Ten Hag is suffering with maybe egos of the players because of injuries, because of maybe bad decision, because of maybe a bad uh, leadership in, in, from himself in the dressing room. But it doesn't work. He will have to change something. He will have to make the players uh, uh, competing all together. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And they're going to be smashed by teams like Brighton 10 times by, uh, every time they're going to play against those teams. No. But we... But we oh, go on, go on, go on. Oh. Producer, director, host, and pundit, <laughs> Frank LeBeau. He's coming up with the material. He's directing <laughs> us as to what we're going to talk about, Brighton. when we're going to talk about. Let's talk about Brighton, apparently. But, okay. And I'm sure we will continue <laughs> to talk about Brighton if this continues, as we've been seeing this <laughs> season. No. Problem as well. Always enjoy no. to watch. But you, you mentioned it as well, Frank, and it goes back to your point, Jules. The reason that we talk about it even more aside from the size of the clubs is the fact that Chelsea and Manchester United have spent so big and this is what we're seeing. Yeah, I mean, I'm starting to have enough of Eric Ten Hag now, always finding <laughs> excuses after the Arsenal game, it was the referee and the VR and this was not. Now he comes up with this stupid line about small margin. There was no small margin on Saturday. It was a huge margin between <laughs> Brighton and Manchester United. There was no small margin. And by the way, his game plan was pathetic. That diamond midfield was never going to work against a team like this. Far too intelligent with the manager, far too clever for Ten Hag saying, hey, you know what, let's put Scott McTominay. I mean, come on, of all people on that right hand side, the poor kid. I mean, I don't like Scott McTominay. I don't rate him, but he was completely lost in a team that was itself completely lost in that game. And, and against them, like Frank said, you've got this incredible team that can keep the ball under pressure so well, better than maybe even Manchester City. And they can, the movement is so perfect and precise. Everything is just so good. And when you play against, when they play against a team like really completely lost like United were on Saturday, then you see the, the contrast is so big. And for me, Ten Hag should have raised his hand and said, listen, I got this completely wrong. The game plan was dire to play Rashford and Holden like that up front didn't make any sense whatsoever even if United started okay and after that they were just taught a lesson it was a lesson of football and 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 the yeah. the, the longer that Ten Hag is, in, is himself in denial by saying no 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 we're not that far actually it's never our fault it's the referee it's this is that it's small margin the further they're going to fall behind because he needs he needs to wake up now and so do the club and the players 
because we saw how bad Chelsea were. United are not much better at all, despite all that money, the 250 million they spent or something. 